So is Python too slow? Now the reality is Python is an extremely slow programming language. When we look at something like Java, C, and C++, it's embarrassing how much faster they can do things than Python. In fact, specific algorithms and applications can actually do things about 100 to 200 times faster than the native Python language. So in this video, we're going to discuss why that is and the different techniques that we can use as Python programmers to speed up and run more concurrent Python applications. Now, now before we get too far, it is worth noting that what Python lacks in speed, it makes up for in development time and cost. Typically, developing programs in Python is much faster, simpler, and ends up costing less as there's less labor involved with the project. Now, this is a massive advantage, and in many cases, you can actually write you know, a Java equivalent code in Python in about four or five times faster than you'd be able to do it in that language. So this is something to consider, and this actually brings me nicely into the sponsor of today's video, which is Kite. Now, Kite wants to help you write your Python code as fast as possible by using their awesome autocomplete engine for Python, which happens to be a plugin for your IDE or text editor. Kite runs a machine learning model on your computer while you type to show you the best possible completions. It ranks all of its completions by relevance, so you get shown the best ones first, and it has a ton of awesome features like intelligent snippets, which save you a ton of time when you're writing code. One of the best parts of Kite is actually the Copilot window. Now the Copilot window acts as a companion window while you're coding. You can pop it up on the left or right side of your screen and it shows you relevant documentation following your cursor throughout the file. Kite's awesome. I personally have been using it for the past about two months. I absolutely love it and the best part of it is that it's free and you guys can download it at the link in the description. So why is Python so slow? Now there's a variety of different reasons why this language is slow, but I just want to combat a few rumors here. The main reason this language is slow is not the global interpreter lock. Although that definitely is a factor to the speed and the way that we can write you know, faster Python programs, that is not the reason fundamentally why the language is slow. The reason the language is slow is because it's dynamically typed. Now we're gonna talk about this more in detail, but I wanna give you a comparison to a language like Java, which I actually personally write in. Now in Java, everything is statically typed, and this language is actually compiled before it's run, unlike Python that's compiled at runtime through an interpreter. Now what happens in Java when you write code is you need to define what type each of your variables are gonna be, what type you know your methods and functions are gonna be returning, and you pretty much have to define exactly what everything's gonna be throughout your code. Now, although this leads to you know, much longer development times and takes a much longer time to write your code, what it does is increase efficiency exponentially when you're compiling. Now, the reason this actually works and the reason this works so much faster than Python code is because if you know the type that a specific variable or object is gonna be, you can perform a ton of different optimizations and avoid performing a ton of different checks while you're actually running the code. Because these checks are performed at compile time in Java. Essentially, you can't compile any Java code that has syntactual or you know even just like typed errors while you're writing that code. So you're gonna try to compile it and it's gonna say, you know, this type isn't accurate, you can't do this. You can't compile it because it knows that when it comes to runtime, that's not gonna work. So essentially all of these checks that actually need to be performed in Python when the code is running are performed beforehand and there's just a ton of optimization done because of this statically typed language. Now you might be asking, well, why doesn't Python do this? Well, Python is dynamically typed which essentially means that any variable can change its type and can change its value at any point in the program while it's running. This essentially means that we can't actually compile the entire program beforehand because we can't do all of these checks at once because we don't know what type these variables are gonna be. They're gonna change at runtime, different things are gonna happen, and because of that, you know, we can't get all this optimization that we might have in a lower level language like Java, C, or C++. And that is kind of the fundamental reason the language is slow this typing, this dynamic typing. And any fast language is gonna have a compiler that's gonna run through, it's gonna make sure that everything is good, it's gonna do all these checks before it actually ends up running the code at runtime, where what happens in Python is all of your code is actually compiled and checked at runtime. So rather than you know compiling it before and taking all of that time beforehand, while you're running the code, a ton of different checks need to be happening to make sure that you know this object is correct, these types are proper, everything is working the same. 
Now, that is kind of the fundamental reason, and that's what we're gonna keep going back to in this video where we talk about some other slow parts of Python. Then the next thing to talk about is obviously the lack of concurrency in Python. This is gonna be your major kind of factor on speed. If you're running an application in Java, C, C Sharp, you can kind of spread everything out throughout multiple threads. And what this allows you to do is utilize all of the cores of your CPU. So to kind of break this down, in modern day computing, most of us have four core CPUs or higher, and that allows us to actually run four tasks at the exact same time concurrently. Now with Python, this isn't possible. What Python says is, well, for each interpreter, we can have at most one thread running at a time. And a thread is just, you know, you can think of it as some kind of operation that's happening on a CPU core. So that means that even if we create a ton of different threads in our Python program, we can only be using one CPU core. Well, you know, a Java program or a C program could be using all eight or could be using all four, which is obviously gonna lead to, you know, a four X increase in speed. Now we can get around this in Python by using something called multi-processing, but I'm gonna discuss some of the issues with that in just a second. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering why the global interpreter lock exists in Python. Like, why would they make that a feature of the language? Well, this boils down again to the dynamic type of Python. So the way that memory is actually managed in Python, and I'm not an expert on this in any means, I've just kind of looked up a few things and made sure I kind of had an idea what I was talking about, is that it's not thread safe. Now what that means is that if two threads or two separate you know, pieces of code are trying to access one specific object in memory at the same time, you're gonna run into issues and essentially we can't allow that to happen. So what we do is we say, at least what Python's done is said, well, we're gonna have a global interpreter lock that means that only one thread can run at a time to prevent this from happening. Because you know, one of the main issues with running multi-processing and multi-threading applications is you have to deal with locking and sharing memory. And that is kind of one of the things that I'm gonna get into now with the multi-processing module in Python. So although concurrency is possible in Python by using the module called multi-processing, which essentially allows you to spawn another Python interpreter that can run its own threads, it's very difficult to actually achieve effectively. I've tried it personally, obviously, you know, I'm not a pro, but I've had difficulty doing this because of the way that memory is managed. Whenever you do this, you need to set up, set up a shared memory object, which allows you to actually transfer memory between one Python interpreter to the other. This is difficult to do and it's not, you know, very, it's not intuitive to actually get working. So that's kind of one of the issues with it. And even though you can do this, you still run into a lot of the speed issues with Python coming from the way that it's interpreted and the way that it works. You can actually achieve multi-processing and concurrency in Python, but it is difficult and you have to deal with much more difficulties and kind of things getting in your way than I would say in Java or C and other languages like that, where you can just, you know, make threads and they will run automatically on the other cores without having to define shared memory objects and locks and stuff like that. So other than multi-processing, how can we speed up our Python code? Well, one way to do this is to actually use C code as an extension to our Python library or whatever it is that we're creating. Now, Python is really built on top of C. A lot of people don't know this, but there's a lot of you know functions and things that you're actually using that are written natively in C and that Python kind of just has an extension for that allow you to use them. And that's why, for example, the sorting algorithm in Python will run you know much faster than if you write your own just native sort actually in Python, be a lot of optimizations done and a lot of things written lower level in C. Now, this actually means that you can do this yourself. So if you need to create something that's gonna run very quickly in Python and you can't use a different language, what you can actually do is write that algorithm in C and import it into your Python code as, you know, an extension. So you can run that code faster than if you had just written it natively in Python. So to sum it all up here, Python is slow mainly because of the way that the language is built. There's a lot of other factors, but because of the dynamic typing involved in Python, we're not able to introduce a lot of optimizations in our compiling and interpreting that we have in other languages like Java. Now this leads us into, well, how can we actually make Python usable and much faster? Now, Python obviously is usable, and in a lot of cases, you don't actually care a ton about the runtime of your code. Or it would be nice if it ran faster, but at the end of the day, you know, a few milliseconds 
isn't going to be drastic to whatever application or product you're building. And in this case, Python is great because it's much faster to develop and to write code in and typically a lot easier and more readable um, when you're developing a project. Now to actually increase the speed of your Python code, you can introduce some kind of threading and concurrency. You can use the multi-processing module, which will allow you to have multiple interpreters running at once and get past that global interpreter lock. But you may run into some issues with shared and locking memory. Now, other than that, you can also write C extensions for your Python code. Obviously, this isn't going to be for everyone as you need to know C to do that. But if you're really in a pickle, you need to get something fast and you need to use Python for it, writing something in C and importing that will speed up your code by a drastic amount of time, especially if you have like searching or sorting algorithms or things that are just really intensive computationally. If you write those in C, that's going to speed up the execution of time of those exponentially. And that's going to save you a ton of time and a ton of headache rather than trying to learn, you know, an entire new language when you can just kind of pick out some pieces of C and write a small extension for your Python code. So with that being said, that has been why Python is slow, how to make it a bit faster, and just some information about the language in general. I'm sure I might have made some minor mistakes here. If I had, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and let me know. Just like you guys, I'm learning as well, and this is my kind of surface level understanding of the Python language. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel down below and let me know what you want to see. In